In this video, we will talk about work done by two examples of constant force. These are gravitational force or gravity, weight that is, and frictional force that is kinetic friction. And when we say constant force, we are referring to a force with constant magnitude and direction. So the magnitude and direction of a constant force do not change with time or coordinates. Let's look at an example where work done by gravitational force or weight. An object that is moving downwards, it's falling downward, so its direction of motion is downward. Now let's assume that the y-axis is heading like that, that's the positive y-axis heading upward, so the direction of positive y-axis is j hat and the direction along the negative y-axis is minus j hat. Now this object is being pulled downward by its own weight. So that is the gravitational force that's acting on this object, mg. As it falls down, it goes through certain displacement. So let's call the displacement h as it falls down back to earth. So what is the work done by this weight. Remember the definition of work that we introduced before. Work is the dot product of force and displacement. So work done by force F equals F dot force dot displacement. So in this case the force is the weight and it's heading downward so it's minus mg j hat dotted into displacement and displacement is also going in a downward direction so it's minus h j hat so the answer is m g h note that this work is positive work which means as it falls down its speed increases now let's look at another example of an object sliding under its own weight as shown Let's say it slides downward a distance d from its current position. So what is the work done by gravity or its own weight? Now free body diagram would show you that the forces that's acting on this body is its weight. Let's assume the mass of this object is m. So the weight is mg. And then you have this normal force here, which does no work for this given displacement. We'll explain why that is the case shortly. And then, as we know well by now, there are two components of this weight going like that. One is parallel to the plane with a magnitude of mg sine alpha and a component which is perpendicular to the plane given by the magnitude mg cosine alpha. So the work done by gravity is quite simply the product of the force which is mg sine alpha. So this is the component that is dragging it down times the displacement d times the cosine of the angle between the displacement d and mg sine alpha which is zero so the angle between them is zero so cosine zero is one and you end up with the expression mgd sine alpha so that is the work done by gravity in this case note that this is actually a dot product because if you take the mg sine alpha as the first force let's say in the direction of let's assume that the direction down the plane is i hat let's just assume that so it's i hat dotted into d which is also along the i hat direction so i dot i is one and that gives you exactly this result now we urge you to refer to the previous video on the dot product uh, the definition of the dot product that says a dot b equals magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of the angle between them which is exactly that in this case 
A few minutes ago, I mentioned that work done by the normal force is zero. And the reason it is zero is because the direction between this normal force, which is perpendicular to the plane, and the displacement, which is parallel to the plane, is 90 degrees. So cosine 90 degrees in the definition of work is zero. For that reason, it does not contribute any work to the displacement along the plane. And the same goes for mg cosine alpha. It does not contribute any work for the displacement parallel to the plane. Let's look at work by kinetic friction. As the motion of the object is to the right, now it is being slowed down by kinetic friction heading to the left. Of course, it has other forces, the weight, and also the normal force, which is crucial in the calculation of kinetic friction. So if, let's say, the object is undergoing a displacement of, say, d meters to the right, the work done by the kinetic friction is F k heading in a minus i hat direction, this to the left, dotted into displacement, which is heading to the right, because the object is moving to the right. So if you compute, you get a negative work in this case, as it should, because now the object is actually slowing down as it moves from this location to that location. So the energy is being transferred out of the object, as we talked about in our previous video. The same goes for the object sliding down on an inclined plane, but now you have actually friction acting on this object as it slides down. So the free body diagram will give you that as the weight, and then you have this normal force, N, and then you have the two components of that weight that is parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. So parallel to the plane, we know it is mg sine alpha, Perpendicular to the plane is mg cosine alpha. So if you ask what is the work done by this friction as the object slides downward, friction is heading upward. So you can write the force of kinetic friction, which is coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force, times the displacement, times the cosine of angle between the kinetic friction and the displacement. So if the kinetic friction is this way and the displacement is this way, the angle between them is 180 degrees. So it is cosine 180 degrees, which will give you minus, minus is from that cosine 180, mu k, the normal force is mg cosine alpha which is this, the magnitude of normal force is the same as the magnitude of the weight perpendicular to the plane, times d. So you see the work done by kinetic friction in this case, it is also negative. Let's look at this problem. A ball with mass 0.2 kg is thrown straight upwards with an initial speed of 25 meter per second. Calculate the work done by gravity on the ball when it gets to the height of 20 meters, that is here. So let's assume the upward direction is the positive y-axis, so the direction is j hat, and the downward direction is minus j hat. So the work by gravity equals the force of gravity, which is its weight of that ball, and it's heading downward, the weight is always downward, minus j hat, dotted into displacement. Now this displacement is upward because now the object is going upward. So the displacement is 20 j hat. So since the mass is 0 0.2, gravity is 9.81 times 20. And note that this minus j hat dotted into j hat is quite simply a negative number. And that will give you minus 39.2 joules. So that is the answer for part A.
part B, what is the speed of the ball when it gets to this height? Let's call that speed Vf. Now using the work kinetic energy theorem, we know work is minus 39.2 joules. Kinetic energy final is half times mass times Vf squared minus the initial kinetic energy, which is half times mass times the initial speed. Now the mass is 0 0.2, can factor that out. Vf is what we want to find, and Vi is 25, and then square that. See that? That's Vi. And you can solve for Vf, and that will be 15.3 meter per second. So it should be, the value here should be less than 25, because the object is slowing down as it moves upward, at as is evident from the negative work. Now in this problem, you have a 5 kg box, slides down 4 meters, down the ramp with respect to the horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.35, and you want to calculate the work done by gravity, kinetic friction, and the normal force. And finally, add them up all together and see what the total work done on the package. So first, the free body diagram. So you have the weight, which is 5 gravity. And then you have the normal force, like that. Now, the kinetic friction is he heading backward, opposite to that of the direction of motion. That's denoted with F sub k. And then you have this component of weight heading parallel to the plane. And that's going to be 5g sine 50 degrees, the angle between the inclined plane and the horizontal is 50 degrees. And then the component of weight perpendicular to the plane is 5g cosine 50 degrees. So work done by gravity. So work done by this force is what we are looking for. That will be the force, which is 5g sine 50 degrees times the displacement, 4, times the angle between the displacement, which is going this way, and the force is also going that way, so it is cosine 0 degrees. And that's going to give you, so that is plus 150.3 joules. It's a positive work. Now, part B, the work done by kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is heading backward. The displacement is a forward. So the angle between them is 180 degrees. So the magnitude of the kinetic friction is mu k times the normal force. The normal force is the same in magnitude as the component of weight perpendicular to the plane. So it's 5g cosine 50 degrees. So that is the force. The displacement is again 4, as before. That's a displacement. But now the angle between the displacement and the kinetic friction is 180 degrees. So cosine 180 degrees. And that will give you, since mu k is 0.35, the calculation will give you minus 44.1 joules. Now again, it is a negative work because the friction is trying to slow the object's motion down. Now work done by normal force. Now normal force is perpendicular to the plane, like that. The displacement is like that. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. Cosine 90 in the definition of work is 0. So immediately we get 0 joules. So whenever you have a force that makes 90 degrees with respect to the displacement, it does no work. Now finally, the total work done on the package. So what we have to do here, we have to take all the work that we have computed in A, B, and C and sum them up together. So in this case, 150.3 minus 44.1 plus 0 and that will give you a total work of 106.2 joules positive work. So the net work on this object is that 106.2 joules is positive that means as the object slides down the plane its speed increases. Thanks for watching.